Someone come up to me on the plane, he's like, yo, wake up and move, bro. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Corey Sampson, he's a hybrid athlete. He's all about motivation and athleticism. There's so many positives to exercise mm. other than the way you look. I've actually recently been working on a hair brand. I just wanted to make something that obviously I'm interested in. And I think sometimes you've just got to bite the bullet and go with it. If you have that self-discipline with yourself throughout your daily life, everything else just becomes easy. I'm excited to have on this episode, Corey Sampson. You might have seen him on Too Hot to Handle. He's a hybrid athlete. He's all about motivation and athleticism, but he's also got an app that really can help you transform your body and hopefully help your mind. So let's dive in with Corey. Glad to have you on, mate. Nice one, mate. Thanks for having me. So, um, so yeah, tell me a bit about your journey. Obviously, you've been on reality TV. Yeah. You've built quite a big audience, so... Um, yeah, it's quite mad. Like I used to work on a building site back in Plymouth. Like we we're just saying, you're you're from Bristol, which yeah. is also southwest. Um, done a little bit of modelling and bodybuilding at the time, um, and then kind of got asked to do this TV show. For why not see what see what's happening? And then uh, yeah, it's been mad from there. How did it so, come up? How did it get um, did the TV? Funnily show enough, up? my friends. So like, I've got a lot of tattoos, and I was always in and out of my mate's tattoo parlour, and. He um, went on to on Channel Four. It's called Tattoo Fixes. Yeah. So him and his brother, um, they were on it for like a couple of seasons. Um, I think it was like in its sort of like fifth or sixth season then. And um, one of the girls casting from that went on to cast for this new show for Netflix. So she said to him like, "Oh, I've got this show coming up. It's a bit like Love Island sort of vibes. Um, do you know anyone that'd be good for it?" And he was like, "Oh, I've got a mate from from here that would be class." And then I had an interview. Went up to London. And then yeah, they were like, "Oh, you might, you may or not, may or not be going on it. Um, just keep a month free from the end of March." And I was like, "At work, like, oh, I can have a month off just yeah. in case I'm going on <laughs> yeah, this." Like I told them, and then yeah, and then and then they called me up like five days before, like, "Oh, we put your flight as you go in." out to Mexico and then that was yeah that was it that was it and of course that's what sort of I guess give you a bit of an audience a bit of a platform on that yeah so like funny enough with Instagram and stuff before I went on there obviously it helped me leverage getting on there but mm. I had four or five thousand followers and then just from like going to Ibiza and like traveling I went to Thailand and I was doing content and stuff and I worked with a couple of brands um funny enough I worked with like Jim King I work with them now but I think I was just getting sent stuff by them at the time nice. and I had like 10,000 followers or something and then I built it up to nearly about 30 before the show come out mm -hmm. and then the show come out and it went up 50k a day for about a week just up to 900,000 oh, wow. nearly yeah so it was pretty crazy um I was only on there for two episodes so I've done well because yeah. <laughs> a lot of guys was on it from the start to the finish and some of them got less followers than me from it. Um, but yeah. No, something I want to dive into really on how you keep that audience engaged. And it's something we noticed I was looking through yeah. before with Meg and I was like, you've done well in that industry, especially the people that have been on reality TV. It's hard mm. to keep an audience and maintain an yeah. audience. Do you know what? It's, I, I'm still trying to work it out myself, to yeah. be honest. In like Instagram itself, the engagement's gone worse in general, I think from like the last sort of year, like I've found my likes and stuff have dropped, but I've seen other people's drop even more. Yeah. Um, I think I was just very authentic throughout and I've never really done anything. Obviously I've took like some ads and stuff to pay my bills like that. I probably wouldn't have took yeah, if yeah. I didn't have to like pay bills. Um, but like that's part of part of it, but I've been very authentic with my audience and um, what I've done is always been like true to me. And I feel like having that sort of, it, it's, there's a lot of strategy towards it as well with posting and social media and all of that. And I feel like I've got my head round and I've treated it like a business, which mm -hmm. is why it's done quite well. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, some people haven't managed it as well. And yeah, it's hard to keep it up, to be honest. Yeah. No, I want to go into a bit of that. I'm going to yeah. crack open this. Um, yeah, I'm you, try you can well. try yours. The yeah, Excellent Energy. So this was started at Passion Health and Fitness again, like yourself. Yeah. You can say if you don't like it on my show, I don't mind too I much. I picked the watermelon because I love watermelon. Watermelon, what do you think? That's really nice. Yeah. You like it, yeah? yeah it is nice. And, and we'll go on to a little bit about supplementation, I think. And, you know, we talked about new topics before you yeah. come on the show. But so you've, you've got your audience, you've built it up. What was your strategy to learn how to, you'll come on to how to monetize your audience, I guess, because yeah. like you said, you've got to pay some yeah. bills. But what strategy did you did you find to create content? Did, was you following trends? Are you now a TikToker running around yeah. dancing? Or do, you what's know, your, do, you, do you know what? So... I could have played the game a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I know that because like I've got a friend that was on TikTok's handle with me. He was on TikTok straight away. 
he was posting whatever trend was TikTok at the time, the dancing, the lip syncing, all of it. And he'd done really, really well. Yeah. Especially if you look at from like a point of view of Too Hot to Handle and its audience was very young. And it was, so it's that generation, which is TikTok. And yes. also a lot of it was female. Yes. So like my following when I first come off was very heavily young and female. Yeah. So like you've got to look at posting for that audience. So me modeling, I think like, one of the first things I posted, which done really well, I think it had a million shares, was a picture of me in Thailand in a shower with my bum out. And honestly, a million people sent, wow. it, sent it to each other. Which is unusual in the male influencer space, I would say. Exactly. Like, in a, like obviously, I didn't really go down the, like, OnlyFans, very, like, explicit content thing. Yeah. But, like, that sort of thing worked at the time. So I kind of was like, okay, this works. So I know what I've got to be posting, selfies, yeah. like top off sort of stuff yeah not so much gym stuff even though i was very heavily like all i really did with my time was gym and stuff yeah um it's only been in, in the last sort of two years that i've managed to like shift it to fitness as a okay. like as a sort of an audience point of view so now how have they transitioned with you do you think well, that's i've lost a lot of female followers and gained male yeah um which is actually better if you look at it from a monetizing point of view um, like if you're working with brands, mm -hmm. obviously I'm not going to model female clothes or modern male clothes. So they look at yeah. your audience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they look at your audience. So if most of your audience is female, obviously people buy things for gifts or for their boyfriends or et cetera. But yeah. they look at it from a point of view is you've got this much male following, this much from the UK, this much from however, do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, that is something they look at. Yeah. So I've had to kind of work my audience a little bit a different way. So, I mean, You've, you've touched there on the engaging audience. You've understood you've got them. Mm. How do you stay away? And I'm, I've always found this interesting in, in the fitness influencer space from the only fan situation. You've got these platforms now, like you said, you brought it up. Was that an idea for you? Was you thinking, right, I'll drop on, drop on these sorts of trends and, and monetize that part of your life? Which, um, I mean, even the mental side of that, you're yeah. sort of selling, you're looking things. How does, yeah. how does that go for you? So do you know what? So to be honest, three years ago, most people who follow me would have seen it. I had OnlyFans for like about a week, right, okay. but I didn't post anything, anything basically on it other than what I was posting on Instagram to a point. It was like just in my underwear and things like that. And I'd done like a photo shoot um, and then I just posted stuff that I wouldn't have cropped on Instagram on there. And obviously it had a big influx of sign up straight away. And then after that first month, it dropped straight away and I didn't reply to comments because I didn't... I really didn't like the comments and that on there. A lot of people will get people to manage it for them. Yeah. Um, but I seen like the comments is just like they want, they're saying mad stuff and you're meant to be replying and engaging with it. Yeah. Didn't want to do that. So I didn't work it properly. So I made a little bit of money straight away, dropped off and I thought it's not even worth my time yeah, okay. posting in. And then, I, and then I quit it. And then even when work's been slower and stuff, like I've never really thought about going back onto it because of the way that it's kind of like, at the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, it's money, I'll do it, see what see what happens. But I've got like a, I've said that I wouldn't do it and I've got integrity in myself to not do that. And I feel like there's different ways, like it's fair enough someone wants to do it, but personally me, I don't think it's for me. So mm -hmm. I don't think I should sell my, I'd feel like I'm selling my soul if I was going to do it. Yeah. Especially like some of the stuff people do. Yeah. No, but I can imagine it must be difficult when you've got a big mm. audience and you know you can monetize them in different ways. It oh, must I, be could hard be, to... I could have been a millionaire by yeah, now, I reckon, yeah. like a hundred percent. It's funny to walk like, away liquid. from that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that, you've got to look at it from a point of view is the older I've got as well, the less I care about actually like just being like money in material things. I used to always be like, I want the next watch. Or oh, at one point I had three Rolexes, do you know what I mean? And I was like trying to get the next one and I was like, oh, I want, like this isn't good enough anymore. I want this guy dweller that's coming out. Or And then I was like getting a new car and then it was like within a month, I was like, I'm not even that happy with the car I've just bought, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it gets to a point where it's like, you're just chasing this like, this thing that's not even going to make you happy. Mm. And that's where I've kind of realized over the last two years, being happy and being proud of what I've done in the way that I've achieved it is way more important than just a quick, quick money getting this and then just spending it and not in, like, do you know what I mean? It's just a bit superficial. It's the um, journey, isn't it? I think yeah. A lot of it is enjoying the journey, the yeah. process. Like I, I fully have this like really simple life. Like I get up and I train twice a day. I eat pretty much the same thing every day. Like most of my days are like that, except for when I have like breaks and I go away with the missus and stuff. And, 
I enjoy that. I actually like fully enjoy it. And like some people couldn't do that. And I, I think once you're happy with this, like it's quite mundane in a way. I think some people think I'm fucking boring. I don't go out anymore. I don't drink. Like, but I don't care. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I actually enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I'm just focused on trying to build and um, do something like positive to the world and, yeah. How do you think that positivity has been affected by social media? Because I think that that thing you you know where people chase the next car, the next watch, the next, the next whatever they make, they yeah. think is going to make them happy on Instagram. Because you see, and you probably posted edited pictures, but there's probably yeah. twenty people that wasn't that. Or maybe yeah. you posted a picture you look amazingly happy, but maybe you weren't at the time. Yeah. How do you think social media has affected that? And what's your view now, like with your content, is that um, changed how you're authentic? Yeah, I feel like some people are a bit naive still to it which is the maddest thing because I've never been naive to it I know what people post isn't always their best thing and I feel like it's almost gone a little bit different like backwards where people are actually trying to post them being emotional but forcing it and like showing their bad sides but too much of their bad sides like and to say like oh, I'm being vulnerable and I'm like as a, in a positive way but I feel like it's almost like that's just attention grabbing it's mm. another way of getting attention now so there's a like almost like a medium like I'm I'm quite open with with my life and where I'm at and what I'm doing but there's certain things I don't share regardless of whether it would like in a way like oh it's a negative but it might gain me something I'd, I would never do that I'd never post it um and I feel like that's the kind of way it's it is fake but it's not just fake like fake good People are like faking bad now as well. Yeah, it's like it's it, and it is what it is. As long as you can see through that and you stay in, I think you just got to stay in your own lane and yeah. just think about yourself and people close to you. And if like someone's posted something like they're not happy and like they've posted about it, like if you're close with them, check in on them. But if it's like someone random just posting it on TikTok, like crying, they why are they posting a TikTok crying? It's it's like a it's either a call for help or it's a way of getting views. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, and I can see it could be easy online to fall into a, an identity, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, I've I've got an online identity, which is a racing driver. So I do do lots of other things, businesses and run this business, Excite. Yeah. Um, but is my identity online is is car racing. Yeah. So I can imagine it's, yeah, you can see people online falling into that trap of their identity becomes, I guess, the opposite of, yeah. you know, faking the dream. They fake that it's not the dream, I guess. Yeah, 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 well, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a it's just a mad place to be. I was actually listening to a podcast the other day, and it was um, uh, what's the and Andrew Fris, Frisco? Is it you know the seventy five hard guy? Yes, yeah, yeah. He he basically said he's like everyone talks about social media and all the positives of it and it being like good for business and et cetera, et cetera. But he was like, he said he had a successful business before social media. And if he could get rid of it completely, he said it would be like amazing to just get rid of it. And it like, do you know what I mean? He said he'd still be able to do what he was doing. doesn't need it. Like, I feel like it is getting a bit, a bit crazy, but obviously for me, it's like my life, my job. Yeah. Um, I do prefer, like, I don't really like TikTok too much. And I feel like, I've seen a lot of people say the same thing, but just the way it is, it's very like fast, like engaging sort of things. Do you know what yeah, I mean? no, I get that. It's I feel like Instagram's very easy. easy to like, to build like your persona on there. That's why I've actually started YouTube okay. um, because I want to have like my personality come across, not just pictures or like yeah. short 30 second videos and stuff. And I think um, the community piece there is important because I, I find on social media with the businesses, we've suffered it a little bit with Excite where you, we can become too focused and hypersensitive to our Instagrams and our yeah. followers and our social. Then we realize we haven't actually built a community outside yeah. of our online platform. And then the people that are not, don't care as much, they don't resonate. We was at a meeting this morning with our team and I was like, let's go back to basics. We're just going to do an event every week, a mental health or yeah. mental cognition event get 10 people there like it, 10 people yeah, that yeah, actually yeah. give a fuck you know what I mean get them there and let's talk about new topics and make them engaged about things so I think it's going to move back more to community really I yeah. think longer term which is why like the longer form content sort of stuff does a little bit better in mm -hmm. a way yeah and I, I've I found it just from my inst um, from posting my first YouTube episode the amount of like comments compared to views I got is like it's crazy compared to like Instagram you get 200 odd thousand views and you might get like 100 comments but like on YouTube, I had like 5,000 views and I already had like 200 comments. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it, it, they obviously, people that are going to spend five, 10 minutes watching a video is definitely going to engage with it more. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's a very good way 
to like sort of leverage social media and stuff, especially with like businesses in that now. Yeah. Um, no, so you, you've, you've obviously took this community, you're obviously into mindset in, in health. What's your app? What's it called? What does it do? And, and that's obviously yeah. come from you understanding these principles. Yeah. But um, So Wake Up and Move is my app. Um, it basically started, I was just, every morning I was getting up at like six. At one point I was doing a very like regimented 6 a.m., get up, go outside, sunlight, walk the dog. Then I was like training. And then it was like, it was almost like a, my version of 75 hard. <laughs> and I did it. I ended up doing it for like a hundred odd days with like, there was loads of stuff on there, like no porn and other things as well. Um, but and is that just a mental side just to touch yeah, on that? It was, it was just to like, it's about self-discipline. So if you could build all these different things and these healthy habits and you could be disciplined in that every single day, it doesn't have to be like a hundred percent. Like there could be a, a social event where you might want to like drink or eat once a month, that's not going to like ruin your whole thing. So I wasn't like, I couldn't miss one thing a day for the whole thing. Yeah. I'd rather do 90% of it. And then I was like, I'm going to extend it to like the whole year. So just try to do everything as much as you can and tick it off. And I had this like list on my phone on a things free app okay. and just ticked off everything, set it. So it would come up with a list every day. And then if I could get nine out of 10 things every day, then it's sweet. Um, so I started doing that and I started posting every morning saying, wake up and move. And then it was like, I did it a couple of times and then someone else did it and tagged me. I was like, all right. And then, so I'd done it a few more times and then I had like another influencer do it and tag me. They were running, posted their run time, wake up and move at Corey. Like, and I was like, oh, I might be onto something here. So yeah. I started doing it more, um, just stay consistent with it. And then I had loads of people doing it, random people. Like I was on a plane to, where was I going? I was on a plane to somewhere and like, it was a bit random. I was flying from like Luton. So I was, even though I'm in Chelsea, normally I fly like British Airways. I had to fly from a different airline. I think it was for work. And I was flying from Luton and uh, someone come up to me on the plane. He's like, yo, wake up and move, bro. And like fist bump me. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like this That's is cool. mad. Yeah. So, and then um, my friends do like marketing for fitness people to help like um, them expand like fitness businesses and stuff. And we just had a chat. I was in Marbella with them and we was like, I think I was actually on the way to Marbella. Um, and we was just like, oh, maybe I'll give it a go. Um, look at building my own platform and stuff. Cause I've been a PT for a while when I was a bit younger and I've got the knowledge and stuff. So I thought I'd give it a go. And yeah, it, it done really well straight away. Um, and uh, yeah, just keeping it ticking over. At the no, that's cool. So mm. what's the idea of Wake Up and Move? Who's it for? And what are so, you trying to get them to do, I guess? So, so to be honest, like the actual platform itself is uh, diet or training programs mm -hmm. and it's like personalized to the person um, you can set whatever goals you want and it, it's like it's a bit automated because there's obviously it's for like a higher ticket of people um, for a higher amount of people but it's a lower ticket amount it's not like a very personal one-to-one -one sort of thing um, but then they're all in the community together and they can get access to they got 24 7 support on there and access to me through like Facebook and stuff um, but the main idea was it is about just getting up and moving and doing something that like just stop staying still and then just doing something just even if it's walking just go up and walk every day like, get up wake up move walk every day and then just build from there and then introduce like three times a week training or doing this and then it sort of will align a lot of other things um mentally and physically for you and i feel like everyone sort of has like owes it to themselves to be doing that because there's so many positives to exercise mm. other than the way you look you why, I mean? why is why is that discipline important do you think so the main thing for me with like self-discipline is it's it's not for everyone but when when you when you've got something really hard to do like you have like that integrity of yourself you're not going to stop and give up like i've run a couple marathons and um in the last sort of six months um, I'm looking to do more as well. And like when you're like at that point in a run, like 20, 30 K in and you're like, especially when you're not being watched, it's not a race. I did one on New Year's Day just to start the year on a high. And I was like 30 K and I was like, oh, no one's watching me. I don't really have to do this. Like I could finish now or make an excuse about my leg hurting or my lungs falling out my ass. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I can't, I can't do that because I owe it to myself. Like I've, I've been so disciplined on the training and I knew that I couldn't stop. Do you know what I mean? So if you have that self-discipline, you know you're not going to, when something hard's happening, like obviously I'm fighting in five weeks, so I'm going to be three rounds in, like in a fight. I can't just put my hands down and stop halfway through. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have that self-discipline with yourself, 
throughout your daily life, everything else just becomes easy. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a lot of that. Alex Huberman's probably become popular now on the yeah. cold showers. And I think yeah. part of okay, there probably is a health benefit to it for sure. But then a lot of that whole sense of discipline, if you can stand in a cold chair for two minutes and just get through it, the rest of your day becomes easier. I mean, I yeah. think the common one is make your bed, isn't it? You yeah, can do yeah, one yeah. thing right the first yeah, part of you, the day. you make your bed, I always do that as well, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like Andrew Huberman. Like, I've listened to some of their conversations that are like three hours long about one thing, like breathing like do you know what I mean and it's like so in detail and like it's not for everyone yeah but I like what they say about like the cold showers and how there isn't actually that many physical benefits to it like it spikes your heart rate and it helps you bring it down which is a, a way of dealing with stress mm -hmm. um but other than that like the actual like it's a mu it's much better to submerge yourself in water than it is to just have a cold shower running on you because I listened to one of them the other day yeah because it talks about you're not actually like isolating anything to do with muscle soreness and pain reduction and all the benefits you get from like a cold plunge but mentally it is still good for you and you get that discipline deal yeah piece. dealing with like getting in a cold shower when you're like especially when you're cold and it's in the morning and you just fuck it I'm going in like that's like really beneficial for you because when you've got like decisions to make and stuff and you think, oh, I can't bother to go for a run today, stuff like that becomes a little bit easier. Yeah, it's that decision fatigue, isn't it? I yeah. think you end up, those little work decisions you make every day just become yeah. more natural and easier. Yeah. Um, but no, it's quite a, an interesting way that you've built that up. And I think, was entrepreneurship for you, was that something you were focused on, like revenue models? You say you've got an app that's obviously high volume, yeah. low ticket, you build in then a big incentive base as opposed to going one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's really yeah. expensive. Was there... I, look, I looked at doing... Mod, did you decide that for a reason or was, did yeah, it just happen that so way? so that was mainly one time, time dependent. Like, I felt like I didn't have enough time to manage, like, weekly calls with people in, like, check-ins. And even though it's a lot more money, um, but also just because... If you look at like an audience from like, it's hard, it's quite hard to sell things to an audience. Like I think people look at a number like 800K followers and think like, it's very easy to just make money off that. Buy like, something yeah, whatever, like, yeah. oh, I could sell a product to like, like 10% of my audience. I'll make like hey, 800 grand. Do you know what I mean? Like if it was like a tenner, mm. but um, I think if that maths are right. But I think the maths was right there. It's not, it's <laughs> not, it's not that easy to do that. And uh, so I feel like, if you've got this product and obviously it's an it's a not a much like more attractive product that's 400 pound a month but it's 400 pound a month a lot of people couldn't afford that cost of living crisis for example anyway but like a lot of my audience is younger so we actually done some stuff with a spreadsheet and like um a form as well to look at the high ticket stuff and i'd get like a spreadsheet and it would basically say who would be like um an earner that could afford it to then reach out to and actually get them on a call to then sell them the product, which is a lot harder to do than to say, this is a product, it's a 10 or 20 pound. I think my app's actually 39 pound when it's not got any discount on it mm -hmm. for monthly. So like, it's a lot easier to sell someone something for 40 pound than it is to sell something for 400 pound. In my audience, I realized it would work better to do the lower end, um, not too too low end that it's a it's a cheap product and it's it's not worthwhile but make it worthwhile and a little bit more expensive than other people's but not out of reach for for the for the mass yeah you know what I mean yeah um I think that was the way that we kind of looked at it so it was from a, like a business perspective that I yeah. thought it would work better did that just come naturally to you you talk about it quite naturally but um yeah like I've always been quite good with numbers in a bit like a, a bit of an entrepreneur like when I was younger I always like what, what I used to go to school with like multi packs of. I was that kid in school <laughs> yeah, with yeah. multi packs of like cans selling them for a quid. And like I've always it's, kind it's of. It's that like, other drink now, isn't it? I won't say because they might be competitors of ours, probably with energy drinks. Yeah. But it starts with a P and yeah, ends with an E. But yeah. you've got kids in school selling them for 20 quid and all yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they um, they reached out to me to send me some stuff. Did and I was they, thinking, yeah. I'll just sell it. <laughs> I need some. My sister's yeah. kid wants some, so I need to get some on some Oh, yeah I'll, yeah. I'll probably get some next yeah, week. It's funny, isn't it? But it's funny again. I know obviously that they're hyper influential individuals and their audience is quite young. Yeah, um, but it's quite amazing. The, They've the done really well with the marketing for that. Yeah, like the from a from a marketing point of view, I feel like yeah, I just feel like I've had like that sort of mindset. I always wanted to push more into like do something else and make a bit more money. Like when I used to work on site, I used to obviously do the modelling, and I was still um, doing some online PT and stuff in mm -hmm. like diet plans for people, and like I was always trying to find a way to like do a little bit more. Um, and then I've actually recently, well, 
for the past year and a half been working on a hair brand. So I'm releasing my own products. Oh, nice. um, it's called Cos Hair. And we're actually at the final stage. We've produced the products. We've got like the bottles done, labeling, the marketing done, the website's finished. I've done a photo shoot for it, but we've just waiting for um, boxes to send to influencers. So like packaging. Like and then gift once, boxes, yeah, I guess, once yeah. that's once that's here, we're going to send it out and launch it. So oh, amazing. That should be no, the next couple months. Congrats on that. Yeah, thank That'd you. That'd be cool. Yeah. And I guess you had to source product for that. Yeah, it's took us, oh, it's took us like a year and a half, maybe, yeah. I think. Like maybe with a bit of stop and start. And like I went on another TV show for a month, set mm -hmm. it back a little bit. Then it's like, we wanted to launch by last Black Friday. And then we were like, actually want to do it right. Waited for like better labeling and then ordered like the stuff from somewhere else. And that's been delayed because of like Chinese New Year. And, yeah, do you know okay, what I mean? So yeah. it's all made here. Um, that was just the boxes. And what's the, um, what's the, what's the core, core values of this brand in terms of hair so care, is it? I, it's funny enough, it was always because I used to get asked if I had a perm, if my hair was fake curly. I was like, just started looking at your hair when it. you said hair yeah, care. I was like, what's, yeah, yeah. what's going on? What do I do with my hair? Like, yeah. is it is it fake? Like, what, like, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually because um, my granddad's Polish and he's got curly hair. That's the only reason for oh, curly hair, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I was like, I, I can never find a product good for it. And people used to be like, how would you do your hair? Like, whenever I did a QA, and a it was always like, how would you do your hair? What product do you put in it? And I was like... I hardly do it, but when I do, I'm trying to put like sea salt spray or like an oil in it. And I couldn't find one that was good. And then um, funnily enough, I was, my friend was a DJ in Tulum and uh, I met up with him for a drink when he got back after four months in Soho and he'd met these guys out there and he was like, oh, we're meeting my friends I met in Tulum because they live in Soho. So linked up with them, they just opened a barber's, but his dad owns a, a factory up north that makes products. So he actually made someone else's hair products and he was like, oh, like we were chatting. And he was like, oh, you do like Instagram stuff, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, I literally make hair products. And then I was like, oh, that's like, that's weird. Cause I've been thinking about something like that. And then I was getting my hair cut by my barber and he had like a white label product in his shop. And he's like, why don't you do like, it's a sea salt spray. And he, it turns out, mate, the guy that I'd met had made these products for people. And it was like a white label thing. It was very easy for to do. And barbers yeah. could just like, put their own name put on something and then sell it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oh no way, that's the same. So it was the same person. Turned out like obviously like things just happened for a reason. So then we got chatting and then basically made my own, we've just made my own products and my own range of stuff in like everything from scratch. And it took us this long to get it going. But yes, yeah, it's, it's nearly there. Which yeah, and I guess you've learned everything about branding and distribution, yeah. and all the bits. And obviously that come like with from that. a from a influencer point of view or from like a an Instagram point of view, I, I kind of get how things work and stuff so and yeah and I just wanted to make something that like well obviously I'm interested in because my how I look is very important with modeling and etc and I wanted to make a product that worked but also looked good smelt nice so I've made it with like a it's a bit like a, a tobacco um tobacco it's got like a an oudy sort of smell yeah um and then yeah oud a bit oud a bit vanilla um and just made it so that it's nice not just like a lot of products like hair products are like very fruity or like yeah okay. do you know what i mean yeah, i feel yeah. like if you were aftershave quite floral you, yeah, yeah you kind of want like your aftershave and your your hair to smell quite similar do you know what i mean you've got like strawberry like shampoo in your hair and then you've got like some oud aftershave on from wherever do you know what i mean i feel like it was just something that i wanted to do and i wanted something i could leave in my bathroom without if it's in a photo and think that doesn't look right back yeah. there. So do you know what I mean? One yeah, with products, the branding yeah, side, so, the yeah, so, looks and feels. Yeah, so um, the main product is uh, sea salt spray. So we've got like a, a sandy sort of texture to the bottle. So it's a bit textured, which is obviously why it's sea salt spray to add texture. Yeah. Um, and it's all like neutral sort of colors. Um, and yeah, yes. Yeah, so, well, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's interesting, you picked up on something a lot of my guests have mentioned there, which is like the networking effect, just being in Soho, talking to that guy, expressing yeah. an interest, seems to be really important to the guests I've had on of like yeah. being open to people around you and having those discussions. Yeah, exactly. Like you never know, like sometimes, I always look at it from an invisible PR point of view. You never know who you're talking to mainly in a negative way. If you're a bit of a dickhead, like, and you say something and someone doesn't really get on with you, just because of conversation you had or something you've said, six months down the line, they might be talking to someone and that person might mention your name, especially if like you're quite well known in it, like your name gets flown around. Someone might mention my name, for example, and then they would be like, oh, I had a conversation with him six months ago. I think he's like, 
he's this, that or the other, then they might end up being like, oh, and then they'd have a negative opinion on you. If they had an opportunity for you at some point, like a job or like anything, or just they talk to someone else, it gets around. So I feel like that's really important with like networking and stuff is obviously if you're not a nice person, you're not going to get very far because yeah. people do talk and it, it gets, it gets said. Yeah. No, and just, I think you, you know, you attract the people you walk around, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you walk around as a nice guy, you just, fairly inquisitive about everything things come to you i think yeah i'm a big believer in that but a lot of the people listening to this um podcast obviously probably maybe have started their own business or they want to start or maybe they're well into starting their own business you've obviously started two businesses along your journey from your following yeah what would what advice would you give to people the mindset to do that and just you know is it um is it luck or do you just get out there and work i feel like being like open to learning and like listening, like you were saying about networking stuff, being like open to like different things is really important. Um, and also like one of the one of the main things that I've had, especially with the hair brand and like launching it and stuff, I've had times where I've kind of thought like, will it work? Or like questioned it a little bit. And I think like it's a it's a good thing to do because you don't want to just not think about things and just go head on straight through everything. But like there comes a point where you've just got to give it a go. And I feel like I was delaying it a little bit because I wasn't sure whether to invest a bit of money in there and like, do I want to like spend that on that in case it doesn't pay off? And I think sometimes you've just got to bite the bullet and go with it and stop like, if you've got a decision to make, don't overthink it too much. Like you need to make decision because if you're just delaying that decision process, all you're doing is adding time on to missing out on, on opportunities or on things. And I found that mainly it related to years before when I, with confidence in like with the TV stuff, I was always a little bit unsure, like if I was sounding right or looked good or this, that and the other. And I think if you don't have like confidence in yourself and just go and do something, you're going to miss out on a lot in life. Yeah. No, I, I had a guest on previously and his advice to me was, you know, operate as if you're going to fail anyway. Because he yeah. said, as soon as you realise you're probably going to fail, because 95% yeah. of businesses do, you would just do things. And yeah. I think it's quite important just to take that risk and, yeah. and run with it almost. Do you know what? I actually saw about probably not last summer, the summer before, I was thinking about launching swimwear. That was what I was okay. going to do. I was yeah. like, I need to do a business. I don't. I want to make like income that isn't just like, obviously that would be pictures of me and stuff at first, but I don't want it just to be my only income being me on Instagram, posting photos or doing me as a personality doing TV and stuff. So I was like, I want to launch that. Maybe I'll do swimwear. I'm always on holiday. You're like, oh, I'm in good shape. I, I could do that. And then I, I set up a business. I had the name. I did the company's houses. I done, I had a meeting with a designer. I was looking at um, like people to make it. And then a lot it, of time in. Yeah, and I, I spent like maybe four, five, six months looking at doing it and stuff. And, and then I, I realised it was a lot of like upfront costs if you did it a certain way and to do it properly. And I was like, there's a lot of competition. There's this, do you know what I mean? And there was all these different things. So I, I failed on that technically. Obviously no one really knew because yeah. I didn't actually like talk about it too much. But it was almost like a little bit of a learning curve for what I'm doing with the hair brand. I used some of that knowledge to do the the app and then I've used some of the knowledge from the app in launching it to for the hair brand as well. Like I know kind of, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's all learning. So even if you do something and it doesn't work out, as long as you don't spend like 20 grand trying to do it and then it just like fails and you've lost 20 grand and you've like, you've got to remortgage your house or like you, do you know what I mean? You spent all your savings. Like that's like, okay, that's maybe not the best thing to just run in and do that. But if it is learning and failing is part of it. And yeah, everyone fails at some point at something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I like that. I think yeah. we're, as a nation, the UK particularly, I do a lot of business in the US now with the drinks and they're just somewhat willing there. They're like, yeah, yeah give it a go, man. Just try it, just do yeah. it. And I think the more we get that sort of noise out in the UK, the better. Because I do think yeah. you're right. You learn so much on those things you try that they'll always back you up in later life. Mm. But fitness is a big part of your life. How now you're getting more entrepreneurial, getting into business. Something I struggle with, and I'm sure a lot of guests of mine will. I was out last night with work, 
drinks till it was probably yeah. one a.m. By the time I got home, I got home, oh, yeah. I smashed a burger, all the usual stuff you uh, probably shouldn't do. Yeah. But how how do you keep fit and healthy? What would your advice be to entrepreneurs or even people nine to five where they think they haven't got time to train? Yeah. Would you say it really does help your mind to keep training? How do you fit it in? Do you just make time do, anyway? Or? Do you know what? I, I wouldn't drink before this because, like, if I drink, I always get tired eyes. Yeah. And it's I read a book. Um, why we sleep by Matthew Walker. Have you seen, mm-hmm. have you read yeah, that? Yeah. And, um, it talks about basically if you don't have seven, eight hours sleep, you're like, you, you like, that's it. You're done. Like <laughs> your day's shit. Oh you're God, like, I'll go you're going to get, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're going to get like this disease and that. And like, it's, yeah. it's quite, it's quite intense, but I can imagine. it was very good to read. Cause especially cause I got a whoop at the time. So I was started looking at my sleep and I was like, I'm only getting six hours and my recovery is not like hundred percent. And then it talks about, alcohol like sedating you rather than letting you actually sleep properly so if you have a couple drinks within like five hours of sleeping it sedates part of your brain to make you think you're asleep but you're actually not getting that quality sleep that you need like your deep sleep which is where you produce testosterone growth hormone or like your REM sleep which is where your brain heals itself and you your memories like working and your brain's functioning so the next day you've got energy and you can actually get by it but I think like all of them things is kind of like almost scared me into like, I'm like so regimented with everything. I'm like, right, my recovery's got to be in the green. So I'm training twice a day. So if I go out and drink, like I'm not going to recover properly. I'm not going to be able to train properly tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So like, I'm very much like, they talk about like balance in like life balance and stuff. I think like, depending on what you want to do, like balance isn't really going to work. Like there's certain things, like if you've got kids, you need to like prioritize time with your kids, like as well as work, like, and then obviously you've got your exercise and stuff. It is really important, but mine's very much like the scales going towards fitness and exercise. Cause I want to run like a three hour marathon this year. I'm fighting maybe a couple times. I'm fighting in five weeks and I might be fighting again straight after. Um, so like, for me, it's really important, but you've just got to think like about priorities and stuff. Cause even when I was on a building site, 12 hours a day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., I still go to the gym every night. So it's not an excuse to have this busy day and all these other things going on because everyone's got an extra hour in a day they could do it regardless of whether it was on your lunch break and it was a local gym, even if it's busy for where you're working, like go in and do it regardless of how busy it is, you need to get it done. So that's the only time you've got, you got to do it then. Or even like, in a way, I don't recommend stuff like home workouts, but like if you had to do a home workout because you can't do anything else, you've got to look after your kids or something like do that because it's better than nothing. I mean, like, I think stress to, to ch- make actual changes to your body, you need to have stress. So doing a low impact, low stress workout isn't actually going to make many physical changes to you, but mentally it will definitely will. And like you burn a certain amount of calories. If your diet's quite good, you're going to lose a little bit of weight or whatever. So like there is certain aspects to it that is good. So I think, yeah, if that's a bit of a ramble, but I think everyone should kind of, you owe it to yourself to to do something for you that's going to like positively benefit your health and your body and your mind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I like that. And yeah. I think I notice when I go away racing, if, if I really, four or five weeks before I go racing, really do cut out social drinking, really mm-hmm. up the fitness and just eat well and just train in, in work I find I race better and you yeah, I don't yeah. know why whether my reactions are better something's just better yeah. and I think the more people realise that fitness can play an integral role as an entrepreneur as even in the office yeah. working 9 to 5 and obviously it's why we we started Excellent Energy and to provide new topics and a cognitive performance boost instead of just yeah. you know these nasty energy drinks that are around but supplementation for you is it what do you think of supplementation we um, briefly discussed new topics before we come so, in here, but What's your view? So depending on like the person and what they're doing, there it has its place and it doesn't. But I feel like when you're at the sort of when you're training twice a day in your diet's like ninety nine percent perfect for what you need to do with recovery and the amount of carbs and protein you're eating and the timings of it and everything, there's like only so much you can do with training and diet. You can't add another training session and you can't change diet anymore like so then you got to start looking at it from like a macro point of view which is like proteins carbs fats to like a micro point of view 
um, which would then be like, look at magnesium and look at zinc for like magnesium for your recovery and your sleep quality and like your zinc and your, do you know what I mean? All them different things is then taking it to the next level. Yeah. And I think like some, some people, especially when I was a kid, I was like going to the gym, so I go to the gym five days a week, like push like chest, back, arms sort of thing. Like you'd be sore if you did your chest and your shoulders day next, like to day to day. So then you're like, right, if I'm still sore and I'm eating quite good, like I'm going gym this much, like what can I do next? I'll maybe try BCAs to help your recovery and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of thing was, everyone was like, you need protein shakes, you need creatine, you need BCAs. And then you have all these supplements and that, but then you're eating shit. That yeah. doesn't make sense. It's again, it's yeah. a pyramid of importance. Almost, yeah, isn't exactly. It? Like there's the fundamentals and then there's like the next steps for everything. But I do think like stuff like this for me has had a massive impact on my performance in I've been using like CBD. Um, I've been using some neurotropic stuff like ashwagandha before mm -hmm. bed, which I think you said was in the bars that you yeah. got. And um, lion, we have lion's mane, zinc, yeah. B vitamins, natural yeah. caffeine, zinc in this, which is obviously good for brain health. Mm. Um, so yeah, we have different neurotropics. Yeah, so like there's well. loads of stuff and there's loads of science behind different things. But you've got to think like, I was listening to one thing and it said you shouldn't eat three hours before bed mm -hmm. because it can like disrupt your sleep quality. But it's more beneficial to eat three hours before bed than to not eat and go bed hungry. Yeah. So you've got to think about it in that way. Like, yeah, lion's mane will be more beneficial for your brain function. But if you're not eating like, it's, sorry to any vegans, but if you're not eating red meat with like grass fed red meat or like, eggs for like certain things like your brain or like fi fish for fatty oils your brain health's not going to be that great anyway so chucking something at it to try fix to it to try and fix yeah, the problem is, yeah is like you got to think about the fundamentals first but i think supplementation is like really really important and i've yeah. got quite a mad plan of different things that i have in that i look at and i know like why i have them as well not just like someone says to take this at this time so I'm yeah. going to try it do you know what I mean and yeah, I kind no, of see the benefit of it and stuff so it's something we we talk about a lot with excite is you do have your fundamentals like you know get your 10,000 steps in a day walk mm. eat your good food get your good sleep and then products like these with the B vitamins to metabolize energy alcarnitine and tyrosine they just help really like you said yeah. to get to that next level yeah. and I think that's a lot of what people probably listen to this podcast for if they've got a business they're thinking how do they reach that next level and yeah. it's been great to hear your sort of thoughts on mindset fitness um, sort of how to just start I think and take yeah. risk it's been a, uh, a lot of the time people that are listening to podcasts in general are already at that level as well to well, like because if you're listening if to you're educational listen, yeah, resources like, you care yeah, anyway you're spending yeah spending an hour of your day listening to like other people talk about things you like you're willing to learn in a way exactly. like, unless you just put it on and you don't listen and you've got it on for the sake of it oh, i did two podcasts today but you were like watching tv or something at the same time obviously but yeah it's people that are actually do it like listening to something like this they're already at that sort of stage to then so they probably are already looking at the health from a certain point of view mm -hmm. and like prioritizing it because yeah. that's what I think is important is prioritizing your health and longevity and like how you function and your fitness and stuff now rather than just going to the gym and bench pressing and yeah. eating protein. No, know? I mean, I've been in the fitness industry a long time, you know, part of these drinks of that. And I do think it's changing now from lifting weights and getting big and looking good, which is good. It's all, mm. it's nice to look good. Um, but I think it's moving now in the yeah. gut health, brain health. It's all like, becoming more holistic. about sleep and sleep quality. Yeah. Like that was never really a thing before. No, it was like, do you eat carbs yeah, or not i used to like get up really early in the morning to train before work sometimes and then train after work miss out on five hours sleep but not realizing that i'm missing out on like prop like positive stuff like growth hormone production and, and yeah like through the night yeah, yeah so like you're actually just like setting yourself up to lose really by not doing that yeah and i never knew it was a thing until people start talking about it more and then like stuff like that come out and then i read the book and do you know what i mean yeah yeah no it's been uh, it's been great to have you on i think Sweet. people should learn a lot from that i've definitely learned a lot more than what you would see on your instagram but where can people find more about what you do and where's the um, where's your channels or your links? yeah so i've got um i've got like a uh, a page with all my links on it which is coreysampson.fangage.com um, it's just like a collection of everything to be honest so that's everything's there but I'm on Instagram mainly um, I post some stuff on TikTok I'm on Twitter I actually really like Twitter um, I haven't got many followers on it but I like actually just being able to say yeah, what no, I want to say, say like, you yeah, yeah and like yeah it's quite nice um, and then now I'm on YouTube as well so my YouTube's very fitness sort of related um, I'm doing like an episode a month and I'm going to 
look more into like my life a little bit on it but it's mainly like the first episode was about running and training for the marathon i'm in fight camp at the moment so the next one's going to be about that um so yes yeah, it's just, that's a bit more of an in-depth look at me and stuff yeah. So yeah no well good luck with the fight coming up thank you i'm sure we'll have a chat after this about doing yeah. some stuff with xi because i love your mindset and what you're doing yeah, great, um yeah. but yeah that was another episode on fuel for founders i hope you've enjoyed it you can check out Corey's stuff remember to subscribe like and comment there'll be another one next thursday